It's early morning. The birds are talking. And the morning traffic has started. And the horses are chit chatting. I've been off for a week, I think, now. Um, thank you everybody who has asked if I'm okay. Is everything okay? Appreciate that very much. It's just been really busy. Um, like I said in my last, one of my last videos about change can start change kind of thing. So a lot of changes have been happening. It's a beautiful morning, a little bright, but it's just a beautiful morning. Got blown out sky, can't see a thing. It's blue. The birds are so chitty chatty. It's quite early. Uh, anyways, let's talk a little bit about changes around here because they're important. First one is this first paddock. I don't have a stitch of video for it, but it has been completely fixed in regards to drainage. And I've said this before, anybody who owns their own place, get a hold of how the water works on the property. Drainage, um, grade, pooling water, everything. So this has been built up a significant amount. And then this has just been thoroughly cleaned. And then we had a strong, strong rain, which just washed it right uh, clean. It looks like it's been just swept up. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed before, but these mats never fit. Ever. <laughs> Not even from day one. Uh, so they got cut and fit in this odd space of, um, of an area. And uh, I actually have a story about these mats that I might get into a bit. This pathway has been completely cleaned up and rebuilt. This paddock has been totally changed. There is now a whole gravel area over here. Uh, the fence line has been taken out on that side. Uh, this, this was just an utter gross, muddy mess that just couldn't be the way it was. Uh, so that has had its usual fabricing, or actually uh, uh, draw out all the, all the mud all the sludge and all the whatever's in there, get it down to some kind of strong high run base. What's going on, big guy? He's such a cool horsey. Anyhow, uh, down to something that's not as squishy as it was kind of idea. I had a little bit of a tiny bit of a freeze. It's about two degrees right now Celsius and uh, I think a little bit before eight. Sun's coming up earlier and earlier. So yeah, as you can see way over there, there is fabric that's sort of peeking out. The whole area's been fabriced five inches or so of gravel because I do get an awful lot of questions on how the paddocks were built and how the arena is built. In fact, today is the day I'm going to talk about the arena and how it was built. But for, what? Hello, Lena. What can I help you with? Mm-hmm, yes. Okay. I totally understand. Oh, what's that? The dog skittering around. Yes, mm-hmm. She says, ear scratches, please. This is quite hard to do. She loves a good ear scratchings. Always scratch downwards and outwards, everybody. If you're going to scratch a horse's ears, you want to drag the stuff out, not make it go back in. So down and there we go. She says, gee, thanks. Want to do the other one? Not at the moment. So that paddock has been, as I said in my last video, how big the paddocks are, that paddock has been properly 
pushed back and uh, properly done and now we're just waiting for everything to harden which I've mentioned in the past is the best thing to do is use mats so everything that was low has been fit what do you want no don't go in there it's muddy as heck lots left to do uh, mats are used to tamp down gravel because it takes a little while okay Zeus come on okay he can't yeah I know it's a big deal uh because <laughs> what are you doing where are we going watch this oh <laughs> let's go get him <laughs> he's gone i don't even know where he's going he's like where are you going man just a little bit of antics so let's talk a little bit oh, they're all wondering what i did all three of them what's he running for uh so that's paddock management in a nutshell these two paddocks have been completely redone and uh that one's ready for the next stage uh of uh <laughs> of its build okay moving on down the way so a little bit more work was done around here to fill you guys in on oh Romeo <laughs> you guys can just 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 look at this guy he's so still And back to food. That's a really good example right there of why um, I actually have a rule that any horse that comes here is not shod. What a goofy. Eh? If a horse puts their foot and sort of paws the net, I don't care. But if they do it with a shoe on, the back of the shoe can poke in the hole and catch and hold and probably rip the shoe off in the end. Or at least keep them caught for a while. Yeah, either way it's bad. So shoes and hay bags generally don't mix if you're going to feed with them properly. Um, <clears throat> meaning that you put them down low. Now I had a question about the fish. There's a few right there. Uh, there's another over there. The rest are probably just down low. But yeah, quite a few of them still. Fish are still going. I know it's amazing, but uh, they will. Goldfish will just hibernate down near the bottom. Might as well go say hi to Gracie. Hello, Gracie. Such a beautiful morning. Here she comes. Better zoom out. Hello. What are you doing? This is eating. What else am I ever doing? Eating, hanging out. Let's see if we can get her whole head in the picture. I'll just back up a smidge. So start scratching, human. Right there. And there. She's an itchy girl. Oh, bonk. Definite bonk. Oh, maybe not. First time ever. She's thinking. How can I get this guy to scratch me? Definitely right side more than left, eh? That is interesting. How come he's not touching me? I'm actually using the gate as my protection. I want to talk about that as well. On how we use gates and fences. The way we do. I'm definitely going to have to put his timestamp somewhere in this video. Because nobody's going to want to watch me go about 
saying hello to the horses and stuff. Let's give her a quick scratch. Birds. The jays are so, so loud. Okay, let's move on a little bit more to some of the other changes uh, that have been going on. We'll say hi to Rue after. Not much, not too much. But uh, yeah, again, it's, uh, it's awfully nice when people sort of check in. This has been a little bit, but not due to not wanting to do something, just due to, oh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen these. You see those red? Oh, I need a polarizer filter. See those big clumps? Uh, hard to tell. Zoom out. Yeah, it's not focusing so well because it's focusing on the reflection. Let's switch to manual focus. Bear with me here. Right there. I think. Yeah. Those big red clumps in there are all bloodworms. Crazy, right? <sighs> Moving on. So this paddock here has had just a small change. The post is gone. <laughs> to any of my OCD friends who thought, get that post out of there. It has been done. What's going on with names? Luke, come over and scratch me now. So the bays are back here. And last but not least, maybe it's the least actually, is part of this has been cleaned. Um, and this stump that was back here has been fully removed. Now that may not seem like a very big deal, but uh, I need to get a dump truck back here in, uh, in time. I don't know exactly the timing, but in time. And hopefully having this cleaner you know, if I were to be against here, it's not going to look as grimy. And it just looks white. Uh, yeah. Birds, eh? Oh. How about getting the stink eye? Poor Luke. That is well practiced ignoring. Moving on. Where's my dog? He made it down here with me. And that concludes all of the upgrades. And it may not seem like a lot, but it was a lot. Everything was a day's worth of work. So, we're done for now. Back to your normal scheduled programming. We're talking about horses. A lot of training, trimming, and stuff. Hmm. It's happening to be gay. Just hanging out. Breathing. It's just doing nothing. Still getting this stare down. One ear forward, one ear to the side. I think we can get them both forward. There. Come on, camera. Focus on the right subject. Here it comes. I'm pretty sure it's the shoulder area he's thinking about. But it could be the neck area. Like right there. He's hoping for some scratches, perhaps. We can oblige, can't we? Yeah, shoulder. <laughs> there it is. Holy smokes! Yeah, it's shedding season. Uh, so we get a lot of hair that comes off these guys. And uh, 
That's it for now, buddy. We got a pile of things to do. I'll be back a little later, okay? This is just, just scratch. What are you doing? Such chatty horses. Okay, so the next stage of things is ready to get started. I guess it's always going to be that way, isn't it? Whatever the next stage of anything is. But seriously, the uh, paddocks up top desperately needed doing. And uh, now they have been done and that feels, that feels good. That feels really good. Um, so I look forward to actually the next stage and I've talked about it before. I'm really hoping to get something new in here. Um, once that solidifies more, I'll talk about it more. All right, so that's it for this morning's. <sighs> Such a beautiful day. This morning's horsey check. And um, there's Zeus. And uh, catch up on everything. What's going on? Just hanging out, waiting for me. Uh, the next segment I'm going to set up and we're going to talk about this arena a little bit. Um, and uh, understand how it was built. I got a question. It shouldn't, shouldn't take long. Shouldn't take long. So uh, we'll cut out and uh, see you again shortly. Let's talk about this arena. Uh, this arena is a sand arena. And when I say sand, I actually mean washed sand or sometimes it's called strained sand, or um, there's another word for it. Uh, essentially what's happened to this sand is that all of the really fine particulate has been taken out or washed out, which leaves a more coarse sand. Now this stuff's been here for a while, so gravel gets mixed in and little tiny rocks get mixed in, but it doesn't come with too many little rocks for sure, even some of these, maybe. Uh, the sand is generally, you know, sand. Um, it's river sand, that I know, uh, and comes from a local river, but it's washed, meaning all of the fine particulate has been taken out. And you want the fine particulate taken out because if you don't, it's going to hold a lot of water. It's not going to drain well. So this, this arena, I'll talk about the rest of how it works in a bit here, but if it was just sand, um, the water should be able to filter through it and out whichever way it's going to go or drain down into a drainage system that lives underneath it. If you don't use washed sand or strained sand or whatever, there's another name for it and I can't remember, but um, if you don't, then it will just hold that water in there and not drain out properly. And if you do have some kind of drainage system or something like that, then the fine particulate will quickly clog it up actually. So um, you want to have a washed sand. Now, on the top it is washed sand, but if we take a wander over to the far side, uh, we can also see what's underneath it, uh, which is essentially what we're looking at here, um, which is called a road base. But if we go over this way even more, where the ditch is and the side of the property is, um, we can see this stuff a little bit better. Um, this is what's called road base, and it is essentially gravel. Um, and it goes on roads, and it's sand and gravel, and it's also called three-quarter minus, three-quarter inch rocks and under. It does not come with trees and stuff. It's amazing this stuff grows in here. Um, another one. Your cedar tree there. Anyhow, so um, this is what goes underneath an arena. Now, um, there's a lot of books out there and there are probably quite a few videos out there of how to build arenas. I read one or two, but the gist of it is the simple, the crux of a good solid arena is going to be a good solid base. And while, we do use gravel uh, underneath 
the sand, what comes underneath that is uh, a good strong base. And I can't obviously show you that, but what I will show you is a bit of the, the angle that this arena is at and a good strong base of, of dirt or solid clay that has been properly graded to the final grade of what you want your arena to be. So in my case, I have uh, a grade that goes down because I knew that I wanted to be able to uh, uh, come uphill and go downhill or zigzag and not have just level and flat. I've ridden on level and flat. I learned on level and flat. And then when I went on non-level, and non-flat, I was thrown off. And I knew that if I was going to teach or train or do anything, or even rehab horses that need um, upward hill or downward um, exercise, then a solid arena for that was important. So there is a bit of a grade, but there's also a bit of a crown because I didn't want to put any drainage under the arena. So the middle is a little high. It slopes a little that way and slopes a little that way. It's not a fisheye lens. Well, it sort of is, but not in this case. But the idea being is that it, it will slope that way, slope that way, even if it didn't slope that way. So if you don't have a grade like mine and the water that you're going to get can't run off really easily, then at least put a crown in is the general idea. I've seen arenas that actually dip in the middle. The middle part will actually be a bit lower. There'll be a pocket and it just turns into a lake or a pond, I guess. Um, so the material underneath here is clay and dirt uh, graded relatively well, could have been better, but relatively well to what I wanted the final to be. All right. Now I've talked about this before because we do paddock stuff here all the time, but underneath the gravel is landscape fabric, a heavy, heavy landscape fabric. It's called filter cloth. The filter cloth must be there to separate and keep separated the two mediums, meaning the, the dirt and the clay and then the gravel. Uh, if you don't do that uh, over time, I was, I think that it would have taken an awful lot of time, but you know, over time, uh, the two will start to mix because water is a great product to use to transfer things around. Um, you can, you know, you can, you can do this experiment anywhere, but if you put two, you know, a heavy material on top of a lighter material, add water, uh, pretty soon that lighter material is going to come up if you just pat, 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 pat. And that's how it goes. Horses are heavy. They run around a lot. So I knew this arena needed to be able to take a beating. Uh, I was going to be putting horses out here. I was going to be riding. I was going to be running around. Um, so it has been built uh, solid in that regard. <clears throat> now, I don't have any drainage under this. My drainage lies at the front here and goes that way under the ground. The front here and under here. I'll show you. What am I doing pointing, right? Just walk around with the camera, man. We'll do. Okay, so there is drainage pipe all throughout here. Over to there. There's drainage pipe under those rocks. Over to there, down to there. And then it all goes down in uh, the pipe in there, but there's also a ditch down there. So any water can go that way. All of this water theoretically should either go in this side or that side, although plenty of it does come down here. Uh, and then through these pipes and away from the arena. So part of an arena build is about managing the water system, uh, drainage uh, system, a runoff system around your arena. So if your arena is lower, where, like mine is, it's lower than sort of the upper part of the property, then you're gonna to need to do that. If your arena sits higher than everywhere else, then you don't really need to do that and it's fantastic. Um, but we can't always do that. Uh, a lot of places, it's just, I don't even think it's feasible. You'd have to bring in so much material perhaps, or, you know, to lift up this much of an area takes a lot of dirt. 
a lot of material. Um, and some material was brought from around, some was sort of dragged up and over, and this arena was built upwards a little bit, but not much. As much as I could. Because um, you want it to be, uh, you know, sort of on a pedestal. But if you can't, stop as much water as you can from coming in with drainage. So again, I don't have any drainage inside. I have drainage at the front. I have drainage down the side. And then of course the drainage that goes down this side here. Um, now this is mainly a grade that kind of goes down there and there's a drain there and that goes into the pond and the pond is self-filling and so on and so forth. Uh, and there's drainage there and there's also drainage at the back, but it's not nearly as important because it's graded. So building this was a long process. It took probably a couple months to get this completely done. And, uh, you know, it rained and there was some, some times you, you can't move machines in an area like this. It's got clay when it's all soaking wet, it just turns to soup. So we had to wait for dry days. It took a long time. Um, and the original grade wasn't as good as it could have been uh, because, and even right here, you can kind of see it sort of dips a little and then comes back up. There isn't going to be probably a perfect um, grade if you're sort of on a budget. If you don't have no budget, obviously you can do everything you want, but as best as you can, get that grade, get it uh, to how you want it to be. And then the filter cloth and then the gravel. Now the gravel, as we saw over there, this gravel underneath here, the road base is minimum six to eight inches or so. Uh, I think in some places where the grade was a little off, had to fill in more gravel. And here is exactly the reason why you want your dirt and your clay or whatever to be your final grade. And that's because you will waste money filling it with gravel. If you have to fill in any deep spots, you're going to waste money doing that. Uh, and it's it, because it's such a large area, the amount of, of gravel that you need to fill in the low spots can easily creep into the thousands. So rather than having to use expensive gravel, use cheap dirt to make sure that the grade is perfect. If I had to redo an arena, I would make sure it is really, I personally would spend the time on an excavator and just keep working and working and working. Um, once the gravel was on over top of the fabric, then I, rented a uh, roller, a big 16,000 pound machine that I drove around for two days on top of this and just boo, just rolly, 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 back and forth, back and forth until it was practically concrete. Once that was attained, and sometimes you have to use a bit of water. If it's really dry in the summertime, road base doesn't pack as well. You need some water. So I think we had some rain that came in as well, so it just worked out. Timing was great. And this whole area got packed down really hard. And if we were to find a spot that's already kind of down, maybe here, and we get down a little bit of sand. Right here, it is, it is like concrete. It's really, really hard. I mean, sooner or later, the horses sort of get through it a bit and whatnot, but it becomes really, really hard. And you can, um, you can sort of test it just by sort of walking around and scraping it with your foot and seeing if it comes up sort of easier. Is any bit, there was, t uh, I think the back corner over there was kind of wet. As you guys know, there's the water fountain there. And then, uh, so this area here was a little wet. So it actually required some extra work to get done right, but it did. Um, and then once that job is done, uh, you can then put uh, all the sand down and rake it out and, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, but before that, come to think of it, all the posts. Now, uh, I know I get asked about posts all the time, actually. And people say, well, how do you put your posts in? Because you've got a lot of posts. Um, I don't concrete any of the posts. Actually, the only posts that were concrete were the big six by sixes on the big shelters, the first three shelters. After that, they're all four by four shelters and built sort of floating. But those were concreted. None of these are. These are all 
pound it in. And I don't think we ever would have managed, managed if we had to do it by hand. So I borrowed a tractor with a PTO on the back and a hydraulic post pounder. And we just went along and did every single post. And these are 10 feet apart. Uh, so there, the boards here are either 10 foot or 20 footers. I think I did 20 footers because it was cheaper. And then we just did a span uh, of two tens kind of idea. So 10 feet apart. Uh, I think that's the maximum I would ever go for posts in an arena is 10 feet. I think I've seen 12 out there, but I think 12 is too far. Before the sand was put in, uh, the two by eight down to the bottom are two by eights were put in and they weren't just put on top of the gravel there. We actually dug two inches down into the gravel that is there. So these, these two by eights are actually buried down a little bit. Um, and, uh, and so they're essentially going to hopefully, uh, have the purpose of holding in any gravel that wants to wander out. And the most important spot for that actually was this fall off area here where the pond was. And that's a whole other story in and of itself, but uh, it was, I, I think I even probably reinforced under there even more to make sure that this arena never, sorry, you can even sort of see this here, how this is bending a little, just a smidge. Um, it also, it's important where the post is, so it's going to have a bit. But, you know, that's going to help hold in the arena because it's going to want to, your arena, if built, I think, correctly, it's going to be sitting higher than the rest of the ground. So it's going to want to spill out. Um, but with the uh, uh, concrete, like, road base underneath, that pounded down really, really hard, and then this stuff in there, and it's sort of dug down a couple inches, and you put the 2 by 8 inside of there, it is going to be held on, hopefully, on both sides, kind of snug, so that the material that's there doesn't come sliding out. The sand as well. We don't want the sand just wandering its way out all over the place. The only problem I have that is down in the back corners, because that's the way the water runs. So... It's manageable. Uh, so yeah, two by eights on the bottom. I probably could have gone for two by tens, but I think for the price, it probably wasn't going to be worth it. Extra couple inches. And then on the top uh, uh, piece, it's, a, it's a, just a two by six. Now I don't try to run my horses around uh, so that they want to escape or jump out, but it's not that it hasn't happened. Uh, so if you have the money for it, spend more on your railing. I think, you know, put in another rail, but I mean, it's this arena, if I were to put a price to it, I think it would be uh, excavating plus gravel plus roller and stuff like that. It's in the tens of thousands. Yeah, I think a gravel alone probably exceeded 10 grand. And uh, sand's not that cheap either. And of course, wood is expensive. Treated wood is pricey. So depending on where you live, it could be, uh, you know, more expensive even than what I put towards this. But, but I will say that I have absolutely no regrets going with gravel and sand and uh, treated wood because it has lasted and lasted and lasted and has been completely usable all year round. Um, there are plenty of other uh, options out there. There's obviously just dirt paddocks. There's uh, uh, bark mulch or hog fuel, it's, it's called. And I don't, I don't think anything good of that stuff. I don't want any part of hog fuel or bark mulch. Uh, dirt, I also don't want because it's just going to turn to mud. Uh, an all-weather arena, I believe, must be gravel slash um, uh, sand. So... Uh, I've heard of some people using crusher dust for this kind of thing, which is the same material that I use in the paddocks. But personally, I think that's a bad idea because it would just harden up and you would have just a hard arena. You want some cushion, you want some softness. Uh, but for my purposes, I also don't want a deep. I think deep snow is bad for horses, uh, feet and legs um, to be on all the time. 
but some slide, some give, I think is really, really good. I'd say if you can't run in it well, you can probably bet that they'll struggle a little bit too in regards to feet twisting and, and turning and, and all kinds of stuff like that. So a thin layer in my case is about two inches. Um, the back arena is a little bit deeper and in some cases a little less than two inches to be honest. But um, I think that the, the, the sand gravel approach, while it costs more in the, in the beginning, in the long run, it is far cheaper for many reasons. So if you can afford it, that's what I would do. I don't think there's anything else. Putting in gates is putting in gates. You know, there's one at each end. I kind of want one here because I tend to kind of come out this way to go put our horses away or something like that. And there is this nice skookum path that's going on in here. Um, and, uh, yeah. and that's about it. That's how the arena was built. Hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully you found that useful and if there are any questions any further on how this arena was built <laughs> please let me know anytime uh there are obviously a few other tips and tricks that other people will have um but it is actually relatively basic to build an arena i wouldn't other than the cost uh i wouldn't want anybody to feel daunted to sort of build their own or do their own uh arena it's not um, it's not anything that requires a lot of technical skill other than grading. Um, everything else, it's, it's just a lot of back breaking labor here and there, unless you've got some, a bunch of machines. And in some cases we did, in some cases we didn't. So anyhow, it's a beautiful day. We're going to get on with things here and, uh, hopefully I'll be able to talk about that back arena next time. Cause it was a little bit different. Um, but yeah. So we'll see you guys in the next video. This has been a bit of a long one. Oh man, the sun is burning off the moisture, the frost. It's coming off in smoky goodness. So bright. Looks cool though. Really like this tree. This is an old tree or old cedar. It's actually a double cedar because this one here was cut off of the other side. And, uh, and I just left it here. I could have removed this. And I thought, no, nah, I really like the characters that it brings to this place. Um, somebody needs to clean up these boards that were brought down. But, you know, and these could probably go. So, <laughs> anyhow, thank you again, for everybody, for checking in and wondering what's going on. It's just busy. Uh, so much to do. And um, updates on other horses. I think Ruli's doing well. I saw Skip yesterday. He's doing pretty good. He had a little lay down. And uh, while well, I was talking with his owner and stuff like that beside us. So that was wonderful. And uh, I have the opportunity to go see Peggy today. So I will fill you guys in on. I think she's doing rather well. Um, but uh, maybe I'll take a quick picture with her. A little selfie. Um, she's doing well. Ch Skip's doing well. Really's doing well. All the horses are doing well that have been here. That I'm aware of. And these guys are doing pretty darn good too. Hello, Roni. Would you like to sniff the camera? Give everybody a nose. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yes, this is done. We're good. We're happy. Moving on to the next step, which is going to be hopefully quite exciting. Roni seems happy here. All is good. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.